Hi everyone, this is James again from Docklands Digital Media Film Club. Uh, it's another tutorial which I had uh, an, a very interesting conversation with one of the members who wanted me to explain how I did the uh, the HUD, the HUD, which was shown, um, if you saw the footage just before this tutorial, in front of the baby where you saw this thing, this sci-fi looking display floating above his baby walker. I'm out. And I'm just going to quickly overview the principle of that. I won't duplicate the exact one, but I'll show you the principle of how I did that. Later, dude. Uh, they wanted me to overview this in After Effects, and believe me, After Effects is the devil's program. Say it's what? It's one of these ones, if you don't get your head around it, it really does do your head in. So, um, so um, I'm going to quickly start that Are off. Are you crazy? Um, I've already now started a composition here, a new composition, and I've imported in that um, particular project bin there uh, a background. So you see there's a background, an image there, and um, there's some targets which we're going to animate. And then we're going to create a background for that target. So what I'm going to do now first is to create the background for that target. So we'll create, uh, oops, sorry, just click down here. We'll create a new layer, a uh, new solid and uh, make the solid a uh, make it the comp size and go OK um, and then from there we will select the um, rounded rectangular tool here and draw the shape of this of this gizmo thing here now we've created one mask there if you hold command and then D it will duplicate it so we have mask 2 and I want you to um, subtract mask 2 from mask 1 by just doing that and then once we've done that um, do shortcut F to bring up the feather command and then from there if we're now going to just feather that up a little bit just so that we've got this really nice um, this really nice feathering here of, of the actual screen from um, from that then, um, I will then, let's just collapse this um, and bring on, hold on, there's some, some idiot outside revving his car, I hope you didn't actually hear that I'm too loud. From there I'm going to bring down to the timeline two gizmos, there's the target number one and from there if I can then just um, scale that down um, just so it make the gizmo a bit smaller to fit the actual screen. Uh, so that is number one. And what we're going to do is that we're going to animate these shortly. So that's number one. Actually, we make them a bit bigger so they look they look really daunting and look really complicated when we animate it. So we've got that there. Uh, let's collapse that, and then we bring down another target. That one there. And then likewise again, I will rescale it. We're going through transform, scale, and we reduce its scale uh, to fit on our screen. And we do that over here. Um, and what we'll also do, let me just collapse that lot so it looks a bit more tidier. Uh, we'll also then put some text on it, some uh, say something like target locked. Um, like that. Uh, let's just move that around. Drop that down to say here. Uh, no, actually, we'll, we'll put it up there so it's out of the way. Uh, like that. Let's alter its scale. Oops. Let's, uh, oh, I hate doing it this way. It's like that. I should actually. It's just sometimes a lot easier to alter the scale of things using this thing. Uh, just reduce it down to here and let's just okay that looks that looks good that looks good target locked um, and what we'll do then let's put something else in there let's write something else in there we'll say on there fire 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 laser there we go that that even sounds more fire laser uh, and again likewise click that down go to transform go to scale and let's quickly reduce the scale very slightly and just position that text 
there. Okay, great. Um, now let's quickly collapse these down. Um, because they're all different colours now, so what we're going to do is to um, select all of these, um, all of these bits here, and we we're going to try and make them all the same colour. So um, we go to Effect and we go to Colour Correction, and then we go down to Tint, and then up here, if we select um, that box and we make it a really nice nice blue uh, yeah something like that uh, nice blue go OK and then there we go we've got a nice blue um, look to that um, and then um, what we'll do also is we'll attach a little bit of a, a blur to that so I'm thinking if we go for something like a box blur um, and then in the radius bit there, we'll just bring that up a tiny bit there. So, oops, not that much. Uh, yeah, probably about that because you know, if this is supposed to be a hologram and you're not going to get the text to look really sharp if it's a hologram. Um, so, that's, um, that's that. Okay. Right, okay. Well, that, that looks more realistic there. Um, right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to select all of that and pre-compose that. So we'll go to Layer, uh, Pre-Compose, and in here we'll just make sure that that's ticked there and there, and go OK. And there um, I've got the composition and I've got this pre-comp over here. Now what's really important is that we've got... Um, the reason I've got the pre-comp here is so that if we need to alter any of this, we can do so. Um, what I need to do also is to try and animate some of this. So within this composition here, we'll do the target locked bit comes up first. So if I select that and we say it, it switches on sort of there. And um, we'll, yeah, actually it switches on there. And then the target locked bit. Um, we'll make it switch on, say, here. Um, so what should happen now is if I was to play this, you'll see what I mean. Um, it says, oops, fire. Oops, I got it the wrong way around. Am I blind? Don't! Oh, how embarrassing. Let me do it the opposite way around, like that. Okay, then it should come up um, target locked, and then fire laser. There we go. And... What we'll do is then let's animate the um, these these gizmos these things so it makes it look a bit better. So the left target will animate that. So we create a keyframe. Let's do a keyframe about here. Um, let's expand that box. Go to transform. Go to rotation and let's rotate it first clockwise a little bit, something like that, and stop. And then we'll do the same to the other gizmo. So go to transform, go to rotation, and then likewise make it rotate counterclockwise this time uh, for that keyframe and stop. Then we will move the keyframe up a little bit, um, say to here. And then likewise on the first one here, we'll make that go now anti-clockwise, uh, a couple of steps say to there and then we select this one and make this one go clockwise um, for a little bit and stop there so uh, like that and what we do we do one more keyframe so if we go to there uh, let's do it just one more time so just do this very very quickly uh, we'll animate it there and now let's quickly do that one again uh, make it were again in the other direction. Stop. So it's just that say it looks really interesting on the on the on the image really. So here we go. We've got a couple of keyframes. Let's test it. So it should now whir around. There we go. And do target locked and fire laser. There we go. It's as simple as that. So let's quickly collapse this. So we go five. We reduce that down to that. 
got the pre-composition. Let's go to the actual composition now. And what we'll do, I will drag down a just an image, really. Um, an image. So uh, have I got an image here? Yep, I've got an image here. So let me just put that down there. And and you know this is a great like opening image. So if I um, oops, don't move that. What am I doing? Uh, select the composition and reposition it slightly so it's sort of roughly in the middle. Uh, let's quickly see if we can see the whole thing. There we go. Um, there's the pre comp and sort of roughly center it really so it looks it looks really good. Um, this is 2D at the moment, so usually if you are tracking this and putting it on some sort of gizmo, you'd normally make it a 3D, a 3D image. Um, you could then again animate the whole thing um, by perhaps uh, uh, making it rotate and do something really interesting. I don't know. So, so if you keyframe it here um, and uh, bring that down, bring the transform down. Um, because that's um, been made uh, 3D, you'd also, and you want to make it, put some motion blur on that as well. Just go rotation, um, rotation, uh, have I got that in 3D? Yeah, I don't know if I've got 3D yet. Yeah. Um, and then just, um, you know, kick it to one side like that, really. So, say on the opening sequence, it, it sort of does something, just straighten that up. Uh, like that, it's not so straight, is it? Yeah, so like that. Um, so let me just see that. So and then say we could make it turn again um, on the next keyframe. So let's take a look at the um, uh, the rotate the orientate. Okay, hold on. Um, let's form. Uh, okay, let, we can make it rotate again um, straight. So does that um, and, oops that's sort of straight like that okay so <coughs> sorry so in the animation it does that uh, turns around and then it says target locked and then it says fire that's really really simple animation of a gizmo um, um, like I've said, hopefully if you've got any sort of questions, then please do ask. Um, and hopefully that will give you a bit of an idea of how I did it. Um, you know, did the um, did the uh, the animation, you know, which showed that little baby in it. I'll quickly replay it again so you've got an idea what the thing looks like. If I just press play, I'm doing it at half resolution here. Obviously the resolution will be a lot better when it gets rendered off. There it goes there. Boom, boom, boom. Target locked and fire. Hope that was good fun for you. Okay, let you go, speak to you again, and hopefully I'll see you at the Film Club um, sessions, which are at Royal Victoria Docks. This is Docklands Digital Media. This is James signing off again. Thanks very much.